My name is Roy Noble, and I knew Grav very, very well from days of working with him at the BBC and in other things that we got involved with as well. He was an extraordinary man in terms of, well, passion and effervescence and presence, really. He had a personality that could fill a hanger, um, and it was difficult to hang on to him, really. And he was a Celt to his very bootlaces because he always used to say that if he wasn't ardently Welsh, he'd love to be Irish. And somebody once uh, was talking to me and said, well, he's ardently Welsh, she said, but actually the name Gravel, not Gravel, but Gravel, is Norman French. I said, well, it may be so, but you tell him. I'm not going to tell him that. <laughs> but Grav actually accepted it. I think the Gravels, first of all, were mentioned uh, in Buckinghamshire somewhere, so he took it on board. But on, well, the Celtic side, the Welsh side, there was no mistaking him um, at all. Uh, and also... I would say that for all his passion and his warrior-like sort of approach to, to battle in, in, in rugby football, he was very, very insecure. Um, he would always seek reassurance, not only in rugby football, because the tales there are legion of him asking other players, how am I doing? Am I doing all right? You know, who's the best centre in Wales? Is it me? That kind of thing. But same in broadcasting. He'd come up and say, how's my voice? Is my voice all right? You know, and he'd always want that um, reaffirmation of how well he was doing. I remember broadcasting in Ireland with him once, and we'd been out on the pop the night before, and he'd been singing because there was a beautiful girl playing the piano, and he was saying, "We've got to get her on the program. We've got to get her on the program." But anyway, um, we uh, got back to the hotel at about half past three in the morning. We'd had a few now. We were broadcasting live the following day. The phone rang in my bedroom at about half past three, and I picked it up and I said, "Hello." He said, Grav, I said, what do you want? Tell me now, he said. What do you think of me, really? You know, <laughs> so he wanted that kind of um, sort of stamp that people did think he was okay. And I remember going down in the morning to pay extra bills we had in the hotel, like phone calls. And my mother wasn't very well, and I'd phoned my mother and my phone, my wife, and my bill came to 12 pence. It was pence then, not euros. And Grav said, could you pay my bill? I haven't got any pence. I'll pay you back next week, which he did. But his bill came to 140 quid, 140 pence. He'd been up all night phoning anyone in Wales who would listen to him and have a chat. He just wanted that sort of confidence again to be rebuilt uh, by, by someone else. And, you know, it's this kind of sensitivity and passion. But in terms of sensitivity, he also was a great guy, I felt, who would make you feel equal. I remember once in a while, you know, it may be surprising looking at my lithe body, but I wasn't much cop at rugby football. But anyway, he, uh, on one occasion, was in a room, and I came in through the door, and it was full of internationals worldwide, Australians, New Zealanders, South Africans, French, Irish, whatever, packed. And he was standing next to Bill Beaumont, um, the England international, of course, and British Lion. And he said, you saw me come in, he said, Roy, Roy, oh, come here, come here. And so I weaved my way through the crowd, and he said, Roy, I want you to meet Bill. Bill Beaumont, captain in the army, captain of England, and captain of the British Lions. Bill, I want you to meet Roy. Pranam and seconds. And, but it was a level, level playing field. And for me now, this drama coming out is, is particularly poignant because when his problem started with type 2 diabetes, I remember, I mean, Max Boyce talks about the England game, the Scottish game, but for me, it's the Italian game. We were out in Rome, and it's the first inclination I'd had that Ray had a problem. He hadn't gone out with the sports boys, and he had a pain in his foot. And it was from there that it started, that he had a real problem. And, of course, within a few months, he was having to be treated, and he'd had two toes off, then he had four toes off. And such is the measure of the man. When I went to see him, he still had this sort of way with accepting things and having a crack or a joke about things because Mary was with him in the hospital in uh, Kamar and Glangwili, and I went to see him, and he said, Roy, I think I'm going to take my leg off. And you know, the surgeon is a Swansea Jack. He just <laughs> made a crack about that, even. Uh, quite an extraordinary, extraordinary man. And, you know, how do you refill a gap like that in terms of Welsh culture? On the rugby pitch and uh, in Wales in general, he is, of course, an icon and a legend in the true sense of both words.